stop right there. We already know what you're thinking. You're thinking of going straight to the comments and writing, Unlocking characters? That's not a pro thing. That's an easy thing for tiny baby children gamers. What is this? A video for littlebabyguides.com? Well, calm down there, big shot. Unlocking characters at a quick rate is one of the most common and earliest problems of competitive Smash. See, if you're organizing a big tournament and you've promised 800 million friendly setups for your 11 billion competitors, you gotta make sure those setups have everything unlocked. For some tournaments, organizers have even had to ask volunteers to come in beforehand and grind out those unlocks. In fact, when Smash Ultimate was announced, a lot of big voices in the competitive community asked Nintendo for an option to pay for the fully unlocked version. And Sakurai said, <laughs> No. So speedrunning that character select menu is still more important than you might think. And we've got all the frame-perfect wall clips and out-of-bounds tricks you'll need to 100% this bad boy so fast that your eyes will burst open like water balloons from the raw G-force of your unlock rate. <sighs> okay, maybe not that fast, but pretty fast. And don't worry, you don't actually have to learn any frame-perfect wall hacks. Now, it has been a calendar year since the game came out, making the topic a little stale. So, we're gonna theorycraft and try and throw in a few new best practices to get characters. And we'll add in some extra stuff too, you know, just to keep things fresh. And if you're looking to speedrun your skill level and unlock your true potential, go ahead and look at ProGuides.com. We've got even more great content over there, like a live coaching platform and, yep, you guessed it, guides from pros like MKLeo, Esam, and more! Okay, now let's get moving! First off, you got three basic ways to unlock characters. Playing games of Smash in Versus mode, playing Classic mode, and if you're a masochist slash JRPG fan, World of Light. World of Light is easily the longest method and requires you to put up with stuff like that one map where there's like six inklings and they all have missile launchers. The second fastest way is to play Classic mode. Classic mode is also the best way to target specific characters you want to unlock. Once you beat Classic Mode, a new character will pop up and challenge you when you return to the menu. Beat them and you get them. You know the drill. What you might not know is the order for Classic Mode unlocks. And you're probably not gonna guess it, cause it's total nonsense. You might expect that completing Samus's Classic Mode would get you Dark Samus. Nope. Inkling. Because just as Samus is a merciless bounty hunter raised by birds, Inkling is a merciless bounty hunter raised by squids. We haven't, uh played Splatoon, but we're pretty sure that's canon. Luckily, we've had a convenient infographic for a while. Take a look. At first glance, it's a little confusing, and it's also in Japanese, so you gotta learn kanji. Okay, not really. All you have to do is look at the pictures. Basically, each character's classic mode unlocks the character under them. If you already unlocked that character, then it'll unlock the next character under. For example, if you already unlocked Ness and you play Kirby's classic mode, you'll unlock Jigglypuff. So if you'll want to unlock your main, the quickest way is usually to follow this chart. But some characters are quicker via the versus mode, like Zelda. You can get an idea by comparing this chart to this one from Redditor Mick Gustavo. This chart lists the order you unlock characters in versus mode. It's worth noting that there's gonna be a 20 minute lead time on versus mode unlock, so if you wanted to unlock Ness, it might be faster in classic mode even though he's the very first versus unlock. Other characters, like Marth and Sheik, are super fast to unlock in World of Light because they're right at the start of the map. And some characters are far down every list and just plain slow to unlock like Cloud. For those characters, the optimal versus route is gonna be your best bet. Classic mode might be the most fun and varied way to unlock characters by yourself. But you want to go fast. You need to go fast. And this third route is by far the most optimal and fastest. You understand me? Yeah? Come on! The third route is based on a simple principle with a few complex parameters. After playing a versus game, you'll unlock a character. However, to make it so progression wouldn't feel too fast, Nintendo put in two limits. The first limit is a 10 minute flat stop gap between each character unlock. You cannot unlock a new character until you've spent 10 minutes in game. But you can get around this pretty easily, you just have to go to the home menu and restart the software. The second limit is where things get weirder. You have to meet a certain rubric before you start unlocking characters. The community doesn't agree just what the rubric is, but it's likely distance traveled, time spent in game, or raw inputs recorded. Combine these two limits and you've got one accepted optimal strategy. First, you create a 20 minute time game with hazards off and all items off except the bunny hood. 
Then you either set the match to two player and use two controllers Sakurai style, or you put on a level one CPU. Now you pick a nice long stage you can run on. Some good examples are Omega Form stages, Moray Towers, Hyrule Castle, and Mario Bros. Now the community is split on what exactly to do here. You either should just run as much as possible to cover the most distance possible, or you should basically click as many buttons as possible so that you log as many inputs as possible. Either way, it'll be kinda dull, so maybe put on a podcast to occupy your mind during this incredibly menial task. Now you should have satisfied the game's parameters and can unlock characters. Now create a one-stock rule set and go back into versus mode and immediately SD. Then you'll get that classic challenge your approaching warning and you'll get to do your thing. After you unlocked that CPU, you restart the software, go into versus mode, SD again, and rinse and repeat. It's no melee break the targets, but hey, we've got some speedrunning optimization in Ultimate. If you end up losing to the CPU, no shame, it happens to everybody. Well, except us. As all of you know, we've got tons of experience fighting the CPUs. But if you lose to the CPUs, you'll eventually get an option to rematch them to unlock them. It's in the corner of the games and more screen, and the game will prompt you when it first appears. The last thing to know is that if you do this on a secondary profile, sometimes restarting the software just won't work. In that case, you've got to go back to the time match and mess around some more, or just leave it on in the background. If this method starts to get boring, you can always mix and match. You can take a break and play a little classic mode or World of Light. Anyways, today's topic was a pretty simple one, so that's all we got. Whether you're helping out a TO or creating a new account or just got the game, we hope this helps you out. No, no, we are not done here. We can go faster. We must go faster. And by God, we will go faster. <clears throat> Excuse me. To do that, we gotta go to the speedrunners. The world record speedrun for unlocking all characters in versus mode is held by Jimmy Caldero at 2 hours, 59 minutes, and 34 seconds. Jimmy Caldero made a few important additions to the versus run. First, during his 20 minute time match, he was sure to pick the fastest character he had, Fox. That way he can travel more distance or put out more inputs. After he did the 20 minute time match, he selected the flat zone map. Just as Go hit the screen, he SD'd by running off the stage. You can actually do this so fast that the timer doesn't even appear. Then, he played Donkey Kong, a heavy-hitting character, to get kills quickly. But is 2 hours, 59 minutes, and 34 seconds the fastest we can go? With just 4 logged runs on speedrun.com, this can be optimized further. The first optimization is simple. Play Banjo instead of DK. If you have all the DLC characters, then Banjo is the best choice for killing CPUs early because their AI brains aren't gonna understand how to deal with Wonder Wing. You just have to damage them a little, lure them to the side of the stage, and land a strong Wonder Wing. Now, the second optimization is tricky and depends on one crucial fact that the game needs distance traveled, not inputs. This is still a contentious point. YouTuber Austin John tested inputs and running and found running more effective. However, speedrunners thus far have been using the input method, not the running method. If it's all about traveling distances, then we can make the time section more efficient by picking Sonic. But Sonic's not a starter character, we hear you say. That's true, but to get him, you just have to beat Mario's classic mode. At the lowest difficulty, even an inexperienced Mario could complete classic mode in less than five minutes. Then you'll immediately unlock Sonic, who has nearly two-thirds more run speed than Fox. 2.402 compared to 3.85. Sonic has about 1.6 times the speed of Fox. Theoretically, this means he'll cover the distance Fox covers in 20 minutes in roughly 12 and a half minutes. That's about seven and a half minutes we're shaving off. Easily worth the five spent in classic mode. Now take into account that Jimmy Caldero had to do a 20 minute time match twice during his run and we're potentially saving even more time. Gotta go fast. So the new theoretically fastest model we're proposing is to instantly unlock Sonic through Mario's classic mode. From there, we play with Sonic during the 20 minute time match and after this, we switch to Banjo to face the CPUs. Now keep in mind this theory isn't fully tested and speed and distance measurements may work in unpredictable ways, but... But... But wait, is all this worth it? Isn't unlocking characters the most fun when done... organically? Isn't it truly best to see the challenger approaching menu after a free-for-all with friends or a classic mode with your favorite character? Isn't there room for compromise? Grinding to get some characters and taking a break with more fun game modes? No. 
No, speed is what matters. <clears throat> And for one final tip on what also matters is make sure you don't waste any more frames and subscribe to the channel right now! Optimal splits, two go with ringing the bell for notifications, followed by a like on the video, then a quick comment. That goes from top to bottom. You won't have to backtrack and scroll upwards, see? We've got all the tips for optimization.